Welcome. Good morning. Uh, we're very happy to have you here. Before we start, I just want to mention a couple of logistical things. Bathrooms. There is a code that is needed to go into the bathrooms on this side. The code has been uh, put on the wall. Uh, it's 8362 if you want to know. But if not, there's a little sign there that says so. Um, other than that, um, well, we are here because we're going to be talking this morning about um, things that matters that have to do with nuclear proliferation or the lack of it. I don't know if we will be needing translation for this seminar, as I believe they're having some troubles with the translating booths on the other room. For that, we want to deeply apologize. Um, however, if there are any troubles, please at the end of this talk, come and talk to me or Tora, who is at the door, and we will try to help you as much as we can. I don't speak any Swedish, but I speak French and English and Spanish. <coughs> if that can be help of you, I'll try to help you. So I would like to introduce, and again, I apologize for my bad pronunciation, but I would like to introduce uh, Goran Prince, maybe I said the name wrong, I apologize, <laughs> who is the, from the Swedish anti-nuclear movement. So I will just shut up now, and let's begin And this. your name? My name is Elena. Elena. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah. The thing is about August Palm now. Sorry? August Palm, as here the, the seminar is about. No, no, no. no, no. no, no. Not this one? Chant, 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 uh, my name is Joran Brunse, in Swedish, which is not the easiest language. Uh, so I can say about yeah. 40 years ago, I studied nuclear physics here at the Lund Institute of Technology. And at that time, me and my classmates, we learned that nuclear energy was so cheap, so it was too cheap to meet, but it was virtually free of charge. Uh, secondly, we learned that the radioactive waste was dumped into the Baltic Sea and that would disappear. Uh, now I know better. Uh, but at that time, me and my classmates were, of course, quite enthusiastic about using our free energy and no problems. Uh, uh, one problem with nuclear energy uh, is creating lots of radioactivity, which is basically a very dangerous substance, uh, and uh, that will last sometimes forever, and anyway, uh, quite long time. So we uh, create a dangerous material, which uh, we uh, give to our future generations. They have to handle the problem sometimes more or less forever. Uh, and that's basically unethical. Uh, one example of creating radioactivity uh, is the European Spallation Source, ESS, uh, and that is a very expensive example too. Uh, and uh, you will hear more about that during this morning session. You will hear more about the nuclear uh, energy problems in Sweden and in uh, Scandinavia and worldwide also. So uh, I will uh, again wish a very welcome to this session. Uh, the energy and climate update debate is very uh, crucial today. Uh, so I think this seminar will really deal about one of our biggest problems in the world at the moment. And, and basically nuclear energy is not a solution. It's part of the problem when it comes to the climate change. Uh, today's moderator is Eric Hegelund, who is a member of the board of the Swedish anti-nuclear movement, and I'm the chairman of that movement. So I will uh, leave the word to Eric. Thank you very much.
Yes, my name is Per Higelund and I'm on the board of the Swedish anti-nuclear movement and also working with Milkers, active in Milkers. Which means? The Swedish Environmental Movement's Nuclear Waste Secretariat. Very nice mm -hmm. title. Well, that's a banner. It's been traveling all over around the Baltic Sea to many places. <coughs> so it's beginning to be a little worn out. I had it in uh, Kaliningrad just a month or two ago. I was down there with a project, a big middle-aged ship that was sailing around the south coast of the Baltic Sea. Started in Germany, ended up in uh, St. Petersburg. And I joined them in Kaliningrad where we I had a lot of this e exhibition material. And I went on the Russian TV and asked why Russia doesn't protest against Sweden's plan for the final repository by the Baltic Sea. As you all mentioned, and as this uh, documentation here shows, the Baltic Sea is the most radioactive sea in the whole world. There's no other body of water that's more radioactive than the Baltic Sea. So we have a problem. And as the documentation shows too, according to the best international experts, it's Sweden that pollutes the most. A hundred thousand times more than the Russian reactors. And people in Sweden don't know about this. This is the best uh, facts that we have from international experts, from uh, SSE, <coughs> are on this uh, scientific working group under the Helsinki Commission, and the uh, German radiation protection authorities are there, and experts from all the whole region, from, from all the countries. It's their conclusion that the Baltic Sea is the most radioactive in the world, and that the Swedish reactors are the ones that pollute the most, routinely, every day, every night. Well, my little presentation here will be in kind of two sections. The first one will be about European spallation source, and in the second half I'll just mention a little bit about Baltic Sea and the radioactive problem we have. Uh, is that how you do it? You're going to hear a lot of sober facts about the European spallation source. I'm going to bring up a contra controversial side of this project. And you can see it on the board here. Transmutation. If you don't know what it is, it's basically a theory that you can make the nu spent nuclear fuel less dangerous, so that you don't have to store it for hundreds of thousands of years, but maybe only for thousands of years. But it's a theory. It has not been put into practice anywhere in the world. They've tested it in laboratories, like small experiments, but a real facility for transmuting waste, that's still just a theory. Nobody has built such a, such a thing, such a machine, such a facility. Today, our local politicians here in Sweden deny that the European spallation source will be used for transmutation. Mm -hmm. So why do we even mention it? Well, we don't trust the local politicians' promises because these are the international 
executive directors of ESS who published this statement in a magazine called Physics World. And they're saying it right there, that ESS could also be used for physics and engineering research into transmutation. So if the directors that tried to promote this project tells this in a scientific magazine, I kind of tend to trust these international directors more than local politicians here that say, no, we're not going to do transportation. It's a European project. It's most likely that it ends up in Sweden, unless our uh, concerns and criticism could somehow manage to stop the project or uh, locate it somewhere else. Here's another Swedish politician, right wing liberal politician, Mr. Lionborg, Minister for Research. He is talking, and it's just a couple of months ago, in very positive terms about transmutation. Now, he kind of admits that he is not a scientist, so he doesn't know so much about it. But he thinks it's very interesting, very attractive solutions to transmute the waste. And you can also see that as Minister of Research, his message is very clear. Research into nuclear technology is going to be a prioritized area of research for many years to come. That's his opinion. It's kind of strange because in Sweden we had a referendum. We had a referendum where the outcome was that all nuclear power should be phased out. Originally they said by 2010 but they've changed that afterwards. But nevertheless, the result of the referendum was that the nuclear power should be phased out. So why the Minister for Research uh, is so favorable to transmutation and to research into nuclear technology is kind of a mystery. He does not respect the outcome and the decisions that have been made by previous governments, I think. Here's another government member, Maud Olofsson, from the Center Party. She explains that they uh, allocated 39 million Swedish crowners for research, which is also aimed into nuclear technology. <coughs> and a large amount of that money we have now paid to promote the Alexel accelerator in Lund. And that's just to promote it. They haven't started building it or spending any money uh, in any other kind of way. It's just for promotion of the project and to try to secure that the project is established in Sweden and not in Spain or Hungary, which are also candidate countries. So there are several leading politicians in Sweden that uh, are interested in nuclear research and interested in transportation. The Swedish government, they appointed the former finance minister, who has also been an EU commissioner, Alan Larsen. He was handpicked to promote the European spallation source and to see if it would be possible to get it to come to Sweden, <coughs> that we should have the project here. In his report to the government about ESS, he mentions a list of number of areas in the society which will be greatly influenced by ESS. And at the top of the list, he mentions nuclear research. Then he mentions medicine and a lot of other areas, but at the top of the list, he has nuclear research. So that's one more of the leading politicians that are kind of hinting, admitting that transmutation can really be a, an issue for ESS. Here's another press release from the ESS people that shows the size and the power of this spallation source. It says it will be a hundred times brighter than present day neutron sources. Excuse me, you said before proton accelerator, was that yes, wrong? Yes, it's, a, it's all true, it's neutron. all true. It's a protons get uh, speeded up in this uh, accelerator. The protons are shot at a 
heavy metal target, which we will get to also. It, it's uh, planned to be mercury. Now, Sweden has worked all over the world to have phased out any use of mercury because it's a very poisonous heavy metal, and even in very small, less than a gram, uh, micrograms, can be poisonous and dangerous for people. Now they're not talking about micrograms, they're talking about 30 to 40 tons of mercury. That's what this uh, ESS is planned. Then the protons will be shot at this mercury. Uh, electrons will be released, and it's the electrons that, uh, or neutrons, it's the neutrons they use as a kind of microscope to investigate matter, material matter. They can come down to the like a very, very powerful microscope, they can see subatomic particles and so on. So it's a way to do material testing and investigation on the subatomic level. Uh, here it says it's 10 times more powerful than the spallation sources currently under construction in the USA and Japan. So this will be the most powerful spallation source in the whole world. It's also the biggest and most expensive research, European research project to have ever been started in any Scandinavian countries. So this is a real big thing. Quite a few years ago now, this man, Olof Carlson, he's a physicist and he's chairman of Sweden's alternative energy organizations. That organization is called CEO. They have departments for all kinds of alternative energy. He was one of the first persons, actually the one that got me interested in ESS, he was one of the first persons to warn about this being used for transmutation. He says, the fact that the accelerator may be <coughs> the first step towards a new prototype reactor, which was first imagined by the Nobel Prize winner Carlo Rubia, on Swedish ground. This is something that nobody wants to talk about. But if you know something about nuclear physics, you should realize that the size and effect of ESS is meant for transmutation experiments on a large scale not just as occasional experiments. He says ESS could be the first phase in developing a full-scale, scary, rubia-type reactor accompanied with the necessary reprocessing plants. There are some illustrations here about the cellar field, although it's so far away from uh, Scandinavia, and although there's so, such little influx of water <coughs> into the Baltic Sea, Sellafield still pollutes 200 times more than all the nuclear reactors at the coast of the Baltic Sea. In England, this is... Uh, yes, Sellafield in England, Sheila. which is so far away, yeah. is letting out radioactive pollution into the water, and the small stream of water that gets into the Baltic Sea still carries with it 200 times more radioactivity than from all the nuclear power plants around the Baltic Sea. This is an example of why we are very uh, scared and critical of anything that has to do with transmutation and reprocessing plants. And as I told you, if the Baltic Sea is already the most radioactive sea in the world, reprocessing plants and transmutation, that is really the last thing we want. That's the absolutely worst we could have by the Baltic Sea. <sighs> He also said that uh, Lund, the muni municipality, which is expected to give territory or space for the ESS project, they should get some kind of legal guarantees, not just kind of promises <coughs> that we're not going to use it for transmutation. They should have a legal guarantee that it's never going to be used for, for transmutation. I don't know if it's possible to get this type of guarantees. But that's his recommendation. You should be very careful. If you give space to this project, make sure it's not going to be used for transportation. That's what he said. 
Here's a quote from OECD, powerful organization. It talks about accelerator-driven nuclear waste transportation. And that's what a Rubia came up with. This is his idea, this transportation. An accelerator, that's what ESS is, proton accelerator. An accelerator-driven <coughs> nuclear waste transportation system would consist of three major subsystems. A proton accelerator, which is CSS, a burner reactor where spallation and transportation would occur, and a processing plant. That's the same as a reprocessing plant. That's the same as a cellar field type of facility. Excuse me, five megawatts is the minimum to run it. That's five big nuclear reactors is needed to run it. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me, no, this is uh, okay. not true. Uh, five megawatt is <coughs> exactly the size of uh, the ESS facility as they uh, plan it today. Yes. A nuclear power facility has uh, 100 yeah. times more power. Oh, so the bigger one. Okay, okay. Yeah. sorry, I was, I was so off. But that's just to show that it's not much anyway. It's a big, uh, complicated and a facility. It's a complicated facility. It takes a proton, a proton accelerator, a burner reactor, <coughs> and a reprocessing <coughs> plant. That's what all these pieces. This is what I already told you, that reprocessing plants, they pollute hundreds of times more than a normal nuclear reactor. Is cellophane only reprocessing or is it uh, uh, making the fuel for the Swedish reactors also? I believe they do both. Yes, I think so. So, so all reactors in Europe are, are to blame even if they don't send back their, their they are to blame also for what comes from Sellafield. We can't say the Swedish reactors are pure. So the Baltic Sea has a negative world record and Swedish reactors routinely release 100,000 times more radioactive pollution into the sea than the Russian reactors near St. Petersburg. So we're worse, much, much worse than the Russians. Since the theory of transmuting nuclear waste automatically means more reprocessing plants, this would only multiply our problems of radioactive con contamination. Radioactivity can kill people or make them or our children seriously sick. Uh, Chris Busby, our friend and expert from England, he can tell you much more about this, why it's dangerous and that it actually kills people can make them seriously sick. It could be a whole long list of different cancer sicknesses. It can be mutations. It can be uh, deformed babies or even dead babies. This is what radioactivity can do and does do. So we don't want ESS here at these waters that are already so radioactive polluted. We don't want them to use mercury, which Sweden has been working to phase out on a global level. The mercury is, besides being poisonous, very poisonous, also becomes radioactive. And afterwards, these 30, 40 tons of mercury has to be stored as radioactive waste for 3,000 years. Uh, it's a very delicate, sensitive uh, project in the design for the ESS. It says that it should not, they, they want guarantees that they would not have ele electricity failure for more than 0 0.6 seconds <laughs> per year. What happens otherwise? It risks uh, overheating, it risks uh, blowing a uh, radioactive mercury in a big cloud all over the region. It could uh, contaminate the whole region of Urso. Another thing, besides from this, uh, very, very tough and unrealistic demand to the steady electricity supply. I mean, we have blackouts that last for days or hours. It's not very long time ago, uh, Oscar Sam 
caused the blackout both in all of southern Sweden and in Denmark. So how can we have a demand that says only 0.6 seconds per year of power failure? And the final aspect I think is very worrying is, for instance, if there are some crazy terrorists that want to punish Denmark or want to punish Sweden, it could be because of the Muhammad caricatures in Denmark or the caricature that this uh, Swedish uh, writer made with uh, Muhammad as a rondel dog. dog. Well, if anybody want, is really <coughs> mad at Denmark or Sweden and wants to punish us, they will have a great help from this ESS project. It's not difficult to sabotage it. It's not difficult to cut the electricity, uh, so we have an uh, electricity failure. And it could spread a cloud of radioactive mercury all over the region. If they want to get at Denmark, they can just wait till the wind is coming from the east, and then they can do it. Then it'll hit all of Denmark, move the whole capital, destroy the whole capital of Denmark. So that's another aspect of it too. It's a very risky, high-risk project. This type of high-risk project should not be placed in the middle of the most populated area in all of Scandinavia. That's where most people live, you see, in the Ersons region. So if you have such a dangerous project, you should not put it right there in the in the most populated area. Of you shouldn't put it anywhere. <laughs> well, preferably not. But I mean, if they should have it somewhere, they should be way out in the boondocks. Is it? Yes. Well, that was the first section of my presentation about ESS. The next will go really quickly. Have you found a word so we can best describe to common people what this is called? Because Spallation is nonsense to everybody. Yeah. I, I, yeah. There has been a little confusion in the program since uh, we should have a starting uh, point that the ESS Scandinavia presenting the project. So after Per, I will try to make a short introduction to what it's all about. Mm -hmm. uh, I also believe uh, Nielsen Mike Hoger from Denmark is going to make a very, very uh, broad description of the project. I'm just taking out some controversial issues because I want you to have it in the back of your mind, what I've just been telling you. But you'll get much more explanations about ESS. Well, about the Baltic Sea, which reactors pollute the most, I just point out that this, these are powers of 10. Here you have the Russian reactors at St. Petersburg. Then you count like this, 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, 100,000. The Swedish two reactors pollute 100,000 times more than the Russian ones. It's like Seraphim being much higher. Yeah. But around the Baltic Sea, we're the bad guys. We're the worst, and the Finns are the second worst. The Finns, they're there, Louisa and Olgilota. If you count, that will be a thousand times more than the Russian ones. But the Swedes is a hundred thousand times more. The yellow one cannot be read from here. What is the yellow one? Or kiloso. It's not me that misspelled it. It's a uh, no, 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 yellow mission. Yes. Um, Could you explain why it, uh, is it um, such a uh, great difference between Sweden and Russia. I asked the chief scientist from Helsinki Commission's scientific working group at a Baltic Sea NGO forum in 2006. I said, can you give me any explanation or any excuse why Swedish reactors pollute that much more? He just looked down and shook his head and said no. <coughs> and he's the chief scientist. He couldn't explain it, I can't explain it. <laughs> I would say it's just a nonchalance. Uh, they, they are ignoring the problem. They say their, their favorite excuse is like this. Well, it's, we're letting out so little radioactivity compared to Chernobyl. <laughs> but Chernobyl was an accident. This is something they're doing routinely every day, letting out radioactivity right out into the ocean. Uh, Swedish reactors should not be compared to the worst nuclear accident ever in the history. That you can't 
justify polluting the Baltic Sea with radioactivity just by comparing it to the worst accident. The Swedish reactors, that's not an accident. That's routine operations. And it should not be uh, the other major factor besides Chernobyl is when they were carrying out atmospheric nuclear bomb tests. Now this, everybody has stopped. They've realized that this spreads radioactivity all over the world immediately. I mean, it gets carried around with the jet streams and the radioactivity ends up all over the planet. So everybody has agreed to stop these atmospheric nuclear power bomb, uh, nuclear bomb tests. They don't do that anymore. So you can't compare Swedish reactors routine releases to nuclear bombs either. It's a very bad comparison. If Swedish reactors should be compared to something, they should be compared to the other nuclear reactors around the Baltic Sea. And that shows that the Swedes are the bad guys, if they should show <laughs> this. OK, I'm just about finished. The Swedish solution, I'm being a little satirical here. Both Sweden and Finland have come up with a plan to store the most dangerous radioactive waste, the spent nuclear fuel, <coughs> which nobody in the world knows how to take care of. They have come up with a solution. They are going to store it at the coasts of the Baltic Sea. Even under. Yes. However, this is not a private matter for the two countries, Sweden and Finland, to decide. International law gives every neighboring country the right to object to these plans because it's transboundary effects. It affects the neighboring countries. So my encouragement to you is we, we should all make our voice heard. We should ask our governments to protest against these plans. The Danish government should protest against these plans. I've said the same to the environment ministry down in Latvia. I was visiting Riga. I said, Miss, my strongest encouragement to you is that you should object to these plans of the final repositories for spent fuel by the Baltic Sea. Now they can put it somewhere else, in a safe mountain inside the country. I guess you are going to talk <laughs> a little bit about this. There are other solutions than, than to put it by the most radioactive sea in the whole world. That's not a good place to put it. Even a child can figure that out. We can't make it any worse. So make your voice heard and protest. I probably don't have time to get well. I should mention this about climate change. Nuclear power stations emit gigantic amounts of hot water from their cooling systems. They take in gigantic amounts of water and they let it out in the ocean again, and then it's hot water. This negatively affects climate change in our ocean. It also can knock out the fish breeding grounds when the wind direction changes, suddenly comes hot water to where the fish are making babies, and this hot water will knock out the, breed, the eggs and so on. So it kills fish in that way. It also speeds up the growth of the <coughs> blue-green algae that we have every summer and that keeps people from bathing in the sea and uh, makes people sick and makes your dog sick. If it goes down to the water and drinks some water, it can get really sick. This is also, uh, nuclear power stations are also uh, part of the reason for this. If you look over there, where it says don't nuke the climate, there are satellite pictures taken from space of the hot water coming out from the nuclear power plants. And you can see, for instance, ring has on the west coast of Sweden, if you look at it later, the hot water from ring has almost dominates the whole ocean between Norway, Sweden, and Denmark, Canada, and so on. Yeah. There's also satellite pictures of the hot water releases from Sosno before, the Russian reactors. Well, there is uh, one more article from the Times newspaper. It shows that the, the filters at the cooling water intake kills billions of fish. At just one nuclear power station there, they say it's a 250 million fish in five hours that get killed in the filters. Now everybody blames the fishermen because they're catching too many fish. That's why the fish are dying out and we don't have, we're losing fish species. Everybody blames the fishermen.
but nobody blames the nuclear power station. How much do you say? 500? What do you say? 250 million in five hours at one what? power station. 250 million. That's feet. what it says in this yeah. Times uh, article, and uh, they quote uh, World Wildlife Fund and some scientists. You can look at that article. Uh, yes, I have to stop. Oh, okay. Our friend Bo. Also, one of the uh, starters of the local resistance uh, group against the European Spanish Assault, local uh, people in London that don't want the project to continue. What's his name? Bo Venerey. Jag står här egentligen för att göra en kort föredragning över istället för då ESS Skandinavia. Det blir ingen lätt uppgift. Jag har engagerat mig mycket i det. Jag är här på behalf av... Anyway, I think most uh, people understood what I was saying. Normally, uh, the ESS Scandinavia should ha have a speech and uh, explain the status of this project at the moment. Uh, but they, they were not willing to come, and so I will try to uh, make a very short uh, briefing about uh, the project. And, uh, uh, normally, I'm engaged... Uh, Normally I am engaged in a working group against ESS and my background is uh, that I have, uh, I was uh, educated in chemical technology on the Chalmers University of Technology and uh, there I took my PhD. Uh, lately I've been uh, working here in Lund as a chemist. <laughs> This summer, uh, as late as uh, as late as uh, the 17th of June, I think it was, uh, there was a um, an update of uh, the questionnaire. This is uh, the papers that have been left down to European <coughs> Commissions. Uh, there are uh, expert commission deciding. Uh, which is a country that should be gratified to have this large uh, research facility. And um, <clears throat> you can see that uh, the Swedish alternative, uh, they have uh, put a lot of efforts to make this look like a really uh, good and ecological project. You can see with the flowers and bees and <laughs> they have green roofs of some buildings. They have wind power. And here is uh, the uh, target station, which contains, as you already heard, large amounts of, uh, of mercury. And the site is here. It's just uh, northeast of Lund, quite close to the the um, housing. This picture you cannot read, it's uh, from the second page of, of this uh, um, application or whatever you should call it, a questionnaire where they tell how they should solve different problems and what <coughs> Sweden can, uh, which efforts Sweden can make to make this a good uh, for, for the installation source. You can read that uh, we have uh, an idea localization in Lund. And for instance, that uh, 
Sweden has set up a goal of making ESS, and Max Lablet is another research facility, uh, CO2 neutral. Very good. This picture shows uh, what uh, uh, the ESS Scandinavia believes could be achieved with the research uh, in the field of energy, environment, new materials, everyday chemistry, health, new medicines, better trains, airplanes, wings, etc. Santa Claus list. <laughs> yeah, something like that. And here is a picture I talk about uh, showing what's happening inside the accelerator. Normally, uh, or originally I should say, originally this spallation source was designed for two target stations and the target is the target for a proton accelerator. Uh, protons, that is uh, nuclei from, from hydrogen, they are ionized and then accelerated in a lo long, long, long magnetic uh, tunnel and uh, reaches close to the speed of light and then is uh, made to uh, crash into the target, which is filled with mercury. Here we have a mercury nuclei, uh, nucleus, when the proton comes and hits the mercury uh, nucleus, it will uh, affect, it, it, um, the mercury has got a lot of extra neutrons uh, and they will uh, leave from this collision, they will leave and spread out like neutron radiation and through these guides, you can then use them for kind of microsco microscopic uh, investigations. And this type of microscope can uh, look at, uh, for instance, large molecules that would uh, otherwise be destroyed by the high energy from, from uh, other types of um, microscopes. Interesting to see that also when this nucleus is hit, it becomes unstable, and some of them will fall into pieces and creating new type of elements. <clears throat> um, around in Europe, there are different laws uh, considering nuclear facilities. In Sweden, this one would be considered not as a nuclear facility, but like a research facility, which makes it much easier for them to get permission to build it here. Uh, if you can read this, is it possible to read this? Uh, no, it's not possible. It says the ESS facility would not be defined as a nuclear installation under Swedish law. Furthermore, uh, it's possible for the Swedish government to decide if this facility should be um, investigated under, uh, under the um, environmental laws. In fact, the Swedish government could decide to give a permit um, for the ESS facility um, and uh, say go above the law, give the, this permission uh, above the law. So there's no veto for Lund? No, and in fact it's worse than that. Normally uh, the process would be that they uh, uh, the, the planning would be presented to the Lund community, but in this case, uh, the community decided 
to not do that, but only to make a detailed plan for the area. This means that according to the rules, uh, only the people living in the area can propose to it. So this is something as extraordinary. And I don't know if it's legal, but it's on the limit. But that is. <clears throat> in the end of this paper, or somewhere towards the end, you can read that the ESS facility will contain a liquid metal target, mercury, lead, or lead this, this <coughs> to generate neutrons. And they expect that uh, the, the laws are made uh, both in Sweden, according to the laws both in Sweden and in Europe, it's possible to, uh, to, uh, for, for the government to uh, make this to legalize, I mean, it, it's to to, uh, to decide to build it here. Can I just ask one question? Uh, if if uh, the people living in the area would um, say that they, they are not, a majority are not interested to have this facility, do they have to listen to it? Excuse me, I did not get. If, if the citizens <coughs> living in the area close to this facility, yeah. uh, if they oppose the proposal to, to build it in the area where they are living, yes. do this group actually have to listen to them? I mean, take a decision? I, I the think they wouldn't listen. They'll just I'm tell sure that they it's safe. Listen. They are allowed to have an opinion, the, but they, it's yeah. not uh, like a, they, the, the, yeah, they don't I, have a veto. I, I, I will. I will um, I will come as the <coughs> last speaker too, and uh, I think we're re already a little bit higher after in the program. But I, I, just very short, I want to say that uh, yeah, I think I believe that they have said all the time. Yes, Scandinavia has said all the time. It will, there will be uh, trials. Uh, you have or will have all possibilities to oppose this. It will be uh, investigating very closely. Uh, according to the environmental laws and so on, but they have this uh, possibility to, to go <coughs> above the law. And uh, last, I want you to note that uh, they want to build a five megawatt station, whatever it means. It means that it is about the double size of what they're building in, in the United States, or they are all started to run in the United States. But they want to have the possibility to upgrade it to a larger one. And they also want to have the possibility to have a second target station containing as much mercury, of course, as the first one. That was the end of my presentation. It was not very positive from ESS Scandinavia, but I, I hope that you got an idea anyway about what, what it's all about, what, what they expect <coughs> to do, and a little bit about how it works. Oh. Is mercury the only possible heavy metal? Or could they use lead or gold or I don't know what? Uh, they say it's possible to use other types of compounds like bismuth lead, but uh, they did not prepare for it, and it's a novelty that is possible, it's probably not possible to achieve, at least not in the short time they plan for. And uh, apart from that, lead and bismuth, they are not very nice uh, <laughs> compounds either. And. Um, I, they also say that this uh, is a closed circuit, so the, tar the, the mercury will be kept inside there. But look at this picture. How, here is how they take off one part from this container of mercury and uh, let out the mercury and remove this very radioactive piece. And then they're putting it back again. <coughs> I, I also uh, lost in my, uh, after, uh, I mean, as a last speaker, I will show some more pictures from inside uh, the ESS and uh, how it works and what will happen inside.
I believe I should introduce our friend from Denmark, he is in my home. He has been uh, doing a great amount of research about the ESS and have been following it for years and he's probably the one that knows most details about the European Space Resource and most of our people. So Nils Henrik, we're very happy you could come to Sweden today. Thank you, uh, My name is uh, Nils Henrik uh, I have a legal degree from Copenhagen University. Uh, the reason I'm here today, I guess, is because I helped organize the first critical seminar on ESS back in uh, 2002 in, in Copenhagen in collaboration with uh, the Danish Ecological Council and uh, some other NGOs from Denmark and Sweden. And since then I have tried to uh, uh, follow the, the ESS project uh, rather closely. And uh, in my presentation, I will try to uh, uh, update you on some of the most recent uh, developments of the ESS uh, project. Uh, I just have to find my presentation, actually. Okay, thank you. You just have to bear with me for, hopefully, uh, very short time. Okay. Yeah, I have problems with the, the Swedish. Okay, there my presentation is thank you. <coughs> So, trends and risk of the European spoliation uh, source in, in Lund. Uh, just uh, to begin, uh, uh, a short comment on the title of the, the seminar. Uh, not to uh, appear too obstinate, but uh, uh, if you look at the title, uh, European spoliation source in Lund uh, for future European nuclear waste cemetery. Uh, I, I have to respectfully uh, conclude that it's a little over the top. Uh, I mean, ESS is a research facility, uh, but it cannot in its present uh, form be turned into an, an industrial facility. And such uh, plans have uh, never existed in the many uh, reports on ESS uh, that have emerged uh, over the last uh, 15 years or so. So you could, uh, if you want to, make a point, uh, say that the, the, the title is, is a misunderstanding and perhaps also a bit misleading. Uh, however, there's still a legitimate concern uh, regarding uh, transportation. Uh, I basically agree with most, if, if not everything, that Pierre uh, said in his presentation. Uh, uh, when we made the first critical seminar five years ago, in Copenhagen on uh, ESS, uh, the, the main theme was transportation, and we uh, commissioned a memorandum from an ind independent uh, energy agency, Vice Paris, uh, uh, that concluded that there is indeed a double strategy in the ESS project management uh, process concerning transportation research. Uh, it can be uh, applied, and it was uh, a strategic and logical orientation throughout uh, the project development. Uh, and uh, Vice Paris concluded that uh, the reasons uh, preventing the ESS Council uh, from maintaining the transportation option in ESS uh, were not technical, but political and uh, financial. Uh, this uh, this uh, memorandum from Vice uh, uh, Paris uh, 
five years ago uh, triggered a boycott of our seminar. I mean, uh, also then at the ESS Scandinavia uh, said that they would attend, uh, and they 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 boycotted uh, and has 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 done that uh, practically uh, in every seminar. Uh, since then, organized by Green uh, NGOs on, on ESS. Uh, <coughs> but they also said that uh, uh, ESS would definitely not be used for uh, transportation uh, uh, experiments. Uh, however, uh, it is still not contested that the strategic core of transportation technology uh, is still present in the, in the design for, for ESS and it will allow future devel developments to re reintegrate uh, transportation. Uh, you also have to take note of the fact that uh, 7 out of the 26 neutron scattering uh, facilities around the world uh, that you have today uh, have designs comparable uh, with the ESS uh, and uh, most of them are, are used for, for <coughs> or these 7 out of 6 are used for transportation uh, uh, Experiments, including uh, the uh, J Park in in uh, in uh, Japan, uh, I think one of the the, the top four neut uh, uh, neutron neutron scattering facilities in the world uh, today, and uh, the most recent uh, J Park in Japan is definitely used for transportation uh, experiments. Uh, so. Uh, the transportation uh, scene aside, what is, at least in my opinion, uh, the most urgent issues with respect to ESS uh, in law? Uh, in my opinion, there are mainly concerns about safety uh, relating to the facilities uh, content of radioactive uh, heavy metal. Uh, the, the second theme is the, the unco uncontrollable spiraling of costs to an even more unacceptable living and here taking uh, also into account the, the project science case and potential as a regional development factor. And uh, third and not least, the facilities enormous electricity consumption. I will briefly uh, try to lead you through uh, uh, these issues uh, and uh, I will try to do it uh, uh, quite rapidly. So if you have any questions and if it's uh, okay with the moderator, uh, please feel free to uh, break in and, and ask uh, questions. Can you just give an idea how many milliards of euros this is? Is it two, three milliards? And Sweden perhaps... I, I will have come to, to that, that, that shortly. Time. But uh, again, if you have questions, uh, feel free, uh, like you, you did, uh, to bring in and, and, and ask them. So, uh, with respect to the concerns about safety, uh, seven years uh, after uh, Lund's uh, uh, and ESS Scandinavia's uh, bid to host uh, ESS, uh, there are still no uh, risk assessments of the facility or any uh, worst case scenarios. Uh, and uh, as Bo uh, uh, has, has pointed out, the uh, target station consists of heavy metal uh, that has to be stored in a nuclear waste repository for 3,000 years after the decommissioning of the, of the facility. So uh, an explosion, uh, that would be a problem because it could spread uh, heavy metal not only over the city of Lund, but the whole region, including the Danish metropolitan area. If you look uh, at a map of the Ørsund re region, uh, you will see, as uh, Pierre rightly mentioned, it's actually uh, the most uh, densely populated uh, region in uh, the whole of uh, Scandinavia. Uh, larger cities <coughs> in the city, uh, Lund, 100,000 inhabitants, uh, five, uh, ESS facility five kilometers from city center, Malmö, uh, 262 inhabitants, 25 kilometers away, Copenhagen and the Danish metropolitan uh, region, 40 kilo kilometers away from, from uh, uh, the center, almost 2 million inhabitants, and uh, uh, finally uh, Helsingborg, uh, 50 kilometers away, uh, almost 120,000 inhabitants. What is, the problem, what is the predominant radioactive isotope that's going to be produced? Uh, I have, have to say, I, I don't know, I mean, it's not like the, the inventory in a nuclear uh, power station where you have the uh, cesium-137. I think we will actually touch upon that uh, subject uh, later. Excuse me. I, I, have, I have a small picture <coughs> of the in, uh, inventory of the 
but thanks. We'll see this later. Yeah. But I, I will, uh, I will uh, try to describe some of the, the problems uh, with uh, the target stations and the content of, of heavy, heavy metal. So, uh, what could happen uh, in, uh, in this uh, uh, facility? Well, according to the report uh, from the people who actually developed the project uh, in the Forschungs Centrum Munich in, in Germany, accidents may be initiated by events within the fa facility itself, uh, like rules of the cooling, problem being mismatched, leaks with target hull or moderator enclosure, internal uh, fires uh, may be connected to ex external events like earthquake, airplane crash, literal external fire or gas cloud ex explosion. And uh, these accidents could, uh, according to the developers of the project, be very serious. Uh, uh, Excuse me. Will you have this on your home page so we can get it afterwards if we get your address? So, because these details are very important. Uh, I, will, exactly. I can give it to you here. And, and I don't know if that plans to uh, make the presentation public on, on the Ford Companion website or the big website. Fine. Very yeah. documentation. Yes. Uh, with respect to serious uh, accidents in the nuclear installation, there are no dose limits uh, in most e EU countries. Uh, and you have to uh, produce an emergency plan uh, which defines uh, details of emergency measures for protection of the public, uh, uh, sheltering, evacuation, relocation, etc. Uh, so, what kind of and how much radioactive heavy metal does ESS contain? Uh, Ovo has mentioned it uh, briefly, and I think he will please turn to this subject, but uh, according to ESS uh, Scandinavia, it would be either lead bismuth or lead the bismuth. Uh, it probably means mercury. Uh, if you look at the, the, the most recently completed uh, nu neutron scattering facilities, Jake Park in, in Japan and S, uh, it is, as of, uh, uh, in, in the, the US. Uh, here you have uh, uh, a content of, of uh, mercury in, in the target stations uh, that is uh, 20 tons and these facilities are considerably smaller than the ESS in London. However, if you look at the, if you, I mean I had have, have this problem uh, many times and I think everybody who takes an interest in uh, ESS in London uh, if you actually uh, want to, to f uh, find out precisely how big is the target, uh, then you have a problem because there's a deliberate strategy on the part of not only SS Scandinavia but also its two competitors, uh, the depression in Hungary and, and Bilbao in, in, uh, in, 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 uh, in, 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 in Spain, uh, not to re reveal the question of, of heavy metal. I mean, uh, uh, there are dozens of re reports, uh, but the very few facts on this uh, very concrete uh, issue. Uh, however, uh, there are uh, several estimates, uh, but obviously not from uh, ESS uh, uh, Scandinavia and the other consortia themselves. Uh, so uh, the, the report from Forsung's Zurich says 30 tons. Uh, and how often do they add 30 tons again? After two or three years? There is, it's not a very much replacement. I, I, I think that the <coughs> company knows more about this, but I, 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 I think they, they expect that the, 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 the heavy metal uh, in the target station, whether there are one or two, is another uh, issue, but they expect the heavy metal basically to last to the end, uh, and that would uh, be a 40 years uh, lifetime. But I'm not 100% sure, but uh, I get the impression that they don't expect uh, much uh, replacement of, of, uh, of the, uh, of the heavy metal in, in the target station. So there are two, uh, also two uh, safety reports from Stutzvik and uh, an ESS partner uh, that, that would say uh, that is a, a, a partner in the ESS uh, con consortium. Uh, one report says uh, 30 tons, another 40. Uh, then you have an assessment from uh, uh, Lund's uh, Technische Hochschule, uh, which says 30 to 40 uh, tons. And, and then you have, and finally, there's an estimate from uh, Linda Birgit, that was here today, and, and Lund's Naturschutzverening. Uh, and she, she uh, mentions that it could be uh, up to 60 tons in case of uh, two uh, target stations. And you have to bear in mind that. Uh, uh, everything above uh, 
the above 50 tons uh, is is actually uh, 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 to trigger the implementation of the the European Seveso uh, directive. So you are in a data category that actually uh, uh, equals uh, the the, the uh, Seveso facility in in Italy. I mean that is not the that is quite interesting. Uh, so what is the, the worst case scenario? Uh, that would be explosion or fire in a target uh, station that weakens the containment where, uh, and at the same time uh, the, uh, the mercury is, is heated. Uh, and this uh, uh, could cause a dispersal of radioactive and toxic uh, mercury uh, and other material over a vast area. Uh, so you have two factors here, the radioactive uh, substances which are dangerous in themselves and uh, you have uh, mercury, uh, which is also very uh, to toxic. Uh, uh, as Bo has mentioned, uh, ESS is technically and reality a nuclear uh, facility, uh, although not a, a nuclear power station, because I mean they use uh, the energy for for research and, and not for for uh, for uh, heating or. or or making uh, generating uh, electricity, uh, but the, the content uh, and the content of radioactive heavy metal, uh, if it is set at, at 30 tons, is a little under half of the content of radioactive heavy metal in the Barsenbeck 2 reactor, uh, which was uh, 76 uh, tons. Uh, but you have to bear in mind that the potential release of radioactive substances does not comprise the same elements. Basically, it's not the, it's not as dangerous, but it gives you an idea about the, about the, about the, the danger level in general. Uh, again, there are no impact scenarios, uh, uh, and uh, it seems that ESS Scandinavia has has no intentions of, of producing uh, any. In fact, in the latest report, uh, they state that uh, even the, the choice of heavy metal uh, does not have to be made before uh, 2012. Uh, I respectfully disagree with the, this uh, estimate because they will have to uh, make public uh, such information on the European uh, Environmental Impact Assessment Procedure. Uh, procedure. Uh, and and uh, again, if, if Swedish law says that uh, they can get away with it. I, I think that, uh, <coughs> that uh, uh, they will have to do it anyway. So the type of metal, uh, heavy metal will have to be revealed as well as worst case impact scenarios in case of a serious <coughs> accident at the, at the facility. Uh, so again, a few words about the European uh, IEI directive. Uh, because you, uh, because you have this European procedure, which, which I guess I'm not an expert in Swedish law, uh, has been implemented uh, in the Swedish legal system. It will be possible for citizens in the Euroson region and Greek uh, NGOs to take legal action if uh, impact scenarios are not included in the material for the upcoming AEF uh, procedure, and that would. Uh, include Danish citizens and NGOs because uh, pursuant uh, to the ESPO convention uh, this procedure would have to involve the Danish authorities and the Danish public. What does ESPO stand for? Uh, it's uh, actually named after the, the Finnish uh, uh, city ESPO but uh, some, so for some reason they call it ESPO in, in English. I mean, you, well, it's an environment. Well, it probably knows it's what it is. Uh, yes, it's, uh, it's a national treaty uh, that grants the public uh, access uh, and, uh, to, to information on the environment and participation in, in, uh, in decision, public decision making. It's a United Nations uh, convention. Uh, that might be the case, yes. But it, as a EU and, and uh, all the European countries have, have, has, have actually uh, uh, ratified the, the treaty. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to bo uh, bore you with a long uh, legal uh, uh, presentation, but uh, just a, a few uh, keywords. Uh, I mean, uh, environmental considerations must be impl implemented at the early stage in decision making. 
uh, there has to be transparency uh, and uh, there has to be uh, uh, integration with respect to all the environmental uh, media and of course public participation, participation in, uh, in, uh, in decision making. There are five steps, uh, I don't have to uh, go into that. Uh, okay, that, that was basically uh, what I had about the, the safety concerns. Uh, so if you have any uh, questions about this section of the presentation, uh, I would take, uh, them take them afterwards. Okay, so another of the problems uh, with ESS, because it's uh, a typical mega uh, a pro project, is uh, obviously the spiraling of costs. I mean, the, the cost levels uh, are uncontrollable, uh, and that is... Uh, Basically, uh, because of, of factors such as long plan planning horizons, a multi-actor process with often conflicting interests, uh, project scope and, and ambition level that changes over time, and it certainly has uh, for the last uh, seven or eight years in, in the ESS uh, project, and uh, uh, also unplanned events that are unaccounted for, leaving budget and other contingencies uh, inadequate. Uh, in this, uh, in this sort of, of project, uh, uh, there's also often misinformation about costs, benefits, and risks. Uh, and, uh, I have to finish now. Okay. Uh, well, I would like to go to my recommendations uh, at least. Uh, uh, that would take a couple of minutes. Uh, so the, the cost, how, how many milliards of euros? Uh, well, uh, the Swedish government right. agreed uh, to, to uh, uh, pay 30 percent of the construction costs in February 2007. A year later, uh, the official estimate of, uh, of the construction costs have risen by 50 percent, according to uh, uh, ESS Scandinavia themselves, if the decommissioning costs are in included. Uh, and there are cost overruns, uh, obviously, uh, which are also unaccounted for. And there's a, a cost control structure that's copied uh, from uh, the thermonuclear experimental reactor ETA in, in France, uh, which is now going to be uh, double as expensive as uh, projected. And they have to uh, agree on uh, a whole new, new uh, project. So. Uh, I'll leave, uh, I'll leave the, uh, the costs and uh, I would have liked to uh, talk about the Scandinavian platform to host ESS. I mean, the Swedish uh, government uh, uh, are willing to pay 30% of, uh, of the investment costs, uh, but they would like other Scandinavian countries, and in this case mainly Denmark, to, uh, to cover an additional 15 uh, percent, uh, and, and uh, a decision on, on this uh, question is expected uh, at any time. Uh, I had some comments, but uh, hopefully you can see uh, them on the on the internet. So, what are my recommendations with respect to uh, what I consider the main issues: safety concerns, uh, spiraling of of, of uh, costs, and uh, obviously the enormous uh, electricity. Consumption. I mean, uh, that I would like to uh, mention very briefly. Uh, ESS is currently being uh, greenwashed as a would-be carbon-neutral research facility, uh, whose uh, power supply is to originate from renewable energy sources. Uh, however, with two target stations uh, implemented, the electricity uh, consumption equals the consumption of a Danish city uh, between 90,000 and 110,000 uh, <coughs> inhabitants. Uh, the current proposal has a, uh, has a demand for electricity capacity of 40 megawatts. That equals uh, middle offshore wind farm, which until 2001 was the largest in the world. But your numbers are 30 times greater than this. Five megawatt, and this is no. That's uh, that's the description of the uh, accelerator. Here we talk about the, the capacity need for for uh, uh, powering the whole facility. Uh, and uh, 
SS Scandinavia sets the facilities annual electricity consumption of 310 gigawatt hours a year. And that's more than seven times the electricity consumption of Copenhagen University, uh, which has 30,000 uh, and 5,000 employees. Uh, okay, just my recommendations. Well, uh, I'll just finish with my, I have five uh, recommendations uh, which I would ask uh, people to consider. I mean, uh, if one is, uh, uh, will be the, the, the SS host site, and uh, there are recommendations about this uh, as early as this month by an expert group on the European strategy for, for research infrastructure. Uh, I mean, in simple this month, you could actually know if ESS is, is coming to law. Uh, if this happens, uh, NGOs and, and private citizens in the Ørsund uh, region should prepare to take legal action if ESS Scandinavian does not include worst case environmental health and economic impacts in ours in case of a serious accident in the EE uh, procedure. Uh, they should also ask uh, the Swedish government and the possible members of a Scandinavian platform to host the ESS as stakeholders to clarify the moral and legal implications of the safety risks of ESS in law. And this, this would imply uh, full responsibility for uh, environmental damage and economic uh, losses. My third uh, recommendation would uh, be to uh, ask the Swedish government and uh, the members of a Scandinavian platform stakeholders to cap the cost of ESS. Uh, overruns beyond a certain level must be deemed unacceptable. And then you also have to reveal the real uh, costs uh, because uh, uh, Sweden is actually donating uh, the site for free and uh, who will uh, probably later explain how, how big and expensive it is as well as a, lo a, a lot of other services uh, which you can read on the internet. And finally, uh, you have to have uh, the, this uh, independent investigation of, of the project. Uh, I mean, it has never emerged. Uh, uh, we have asked for it uh, for five or six years. Uh, uh, we thought it would come uh, uh, earlier this year uh, when the Danish government uh, promised to uh, investigate the project before uh, they eventually gave their consent to co-host, but uh, it didn't happen. Okay, uh, thank you. I think this, my, my time has run out. Don't tell me